In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Intermediate Value Theorem. All right, we're just going to do a um, nice little brief introduction to this theorem so that you could start using it and applying it in a pre-calc class. Usually you go into a little bit more detail, more formal definition of it if you are in a calculus class. All right, but so the, the simple definition here that we're going to use for our pre-calc application of this would be um, we're going to let f be a polynomial function. If f of a and f of b have opposite signs, then there is at least one real root between a and b. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take a look at what this could possibly look like from a graphical standpoint. Okay, so I'm going to have some poly polynomial function and we're going to call it f. All right, I'm going to have an f of a and an f of b, and if I force them to have opposite signs, then what this is saying is then there has to be at least one real root. Could be more, but there has to be at least one. Okay, so um, maybe let's suppose our a, our interval here is going to be a, and our interval over here is going to be b. All right, so in this interval, and then let's just say I've got a random polynomial curve like such. All right, we'll call this our f of x. All right, so then the way I have chose to draw this right here, okay, well, if I do f of a, well, I would go to a, plug it into the function, and it would be right there, in which case then f of a would be less than zero or negative. All right, and then for my f of b, I would go over to b, I would go up to the function, and it would be right there, and this would be f of b, which obviously is greater than zero. So I definitely have an f of a and an f of b that have opposite signs. All right, so then now the theorem states that we have at least one real root. Okay, and that real root is, well, let's not use that color, let's use blue so it stands out a little bit better. That right there is my um, one real root. Oops, one real root. Okay, now the reason we say at least one real root is because if it's a pretty simple curve and it moves like that, well, then it's only going to cross that x-axis once. All right, however, there's nothing that says that this polynomial curve couldn't come up and then have some hills and valleys in here, cross multiple times, and then finish on up here, in which case it would have more than one real root. Okay, so um, that's kind of a, an analysis right there of that intermediate value theorem, a really simple concept for it. All right, now let's take a look at an example of how that might be applied. Um, they might ask you to show that the function f of x equals x to the third minus 4x minus 6 has a real root between 2 and 3. Okay, so what we would need to do is we would need to plug both 2 and 3 into that function and just take a look at what the answers are. Are we going to get a positive one? Are we going to get a negative one? Are they both going to be positive? Are they going to both be negative? What's going to be, you know, what's going to go on there? Um, so that would be the first thing that I would do is I would take my 2 and plug it into my function. So f of 2 and then plugging that in I would have a 2 to the third minus a 4 times a 2 minus a 6, and that's going to give me an 8 minus an 8 minus a 6. Those two 8s are going to go away. That's going to give me a negative 6 value. All right, then I would want to plug in my 3. So plugging 3 into f, I would have a 3 cubed minus a 4 times a 3 minus a 6. Doing a little bit of arithmetic here, 27 minus 12 minus 6 that's going to give me a 9. Okay, so I do have a negative value and I have a positive value. So somewhere in that interval from 2 to 3, then yes, I am going to have one real root. This function will have one real root. Um, so since they're asking you to show this, they might say prove, verify, show. You might want to uh, write a therefore statement, make it a little bit more mathematically sound here. So I could say therefore, since f of 2 is less than 0, and f of 3 is greater than 0, then by the intermediate value theorem, f of x has at least one real root between 2 and 3. 
And really all that intermediate value theorem does is just lets us identify whether or not there's a root in there. It really doesn't give us a way to find that, okay? Now you could use other methods to find that root if you wanted to, but we just are really trying to verify whether or not one exists. So um, explanation of the intermediate value theorem and then one application of how you might use it in a pre-calc class. So definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.